The greatest threat to terrorist groups like the Islamic State, the Taliban, Boko Haram, al-Shabaab, and al-Qaeda is not a UN resolution or the US military. The greatest threat to terrorists is an informed population, because only an informed population can undermine the ideology that gives rise to jihad. With this in mind, let's go through 10 facts about the Quran, history's most effective manual for violently subjugating nations and cultures. Fact number one, the word Quran means recitation. The Quran is something that's supposed to be recited from memory. Muhammad and his companions weren't big on reading, and in Muhammad's time, portions of the Quran were only written down as memory aids. It wasn't until later that some of his followers came up with the idea of putting it all together into book form. So why would Muslims want to recite the Quran? Because, fact number two, Muslims believe that the Quran is the word of Allah. The angel Gabriel, as the story goes, delivered verses to Muhammad, and Muhammad passed these verses on to his followers. But as far as the Quran is concerned, Gabriel and Muhammad were male men. It's the word of Allah, not the words of Gabriel or Muhammad. Why do Muslims believe that the Quran is the word of Allah? Because, fact number three, Muhammad said so. The Quran was supposedly revealed to one man, Muhammad. Unlike the Bible, which contains numerous shorter works written by around 40 different authors, the Quran stands or falls with the lone testimony of Muhammad, a guy whose first impression of his revelations was that they were demonic, a guy who repeatedly tried to kill himself, a guy who believed he was the victim of magic spells that gave him delusional thoughts and false beliefs, a guy who delivered verses to his followers and later blamed the devil for tricking him, a guy who had sex with a nine-year-old girl, had nine wives at one time, even though the Quran says Muslims can only have four, married the divorced wife of his own adopted son, after causing the divorce, told his followers it's okay to beat their wives into submission, and so on. So what evidence did Muhammad offer to show that his revelations were from Allah? Fact number four, Muhammad's main argument for the inspiration of the Quran was what we'll call the argument from literary excellence, one of the silliest arguments ever offered by anyone for anything. My poetry is better than your poetry, so my poetry must be the inspired word of Allah. The idea is that no one can produce something as wonderful as, or more wonderful than, the Quran. Now, there are all kinds of things we could do to make the Quran better than it is. We could take out the verses about slaughtering unbelievers, or about raping female captives, or about having sex with prepubescent girls. But one simple way to improve the Quran would be to put it in chronological order. Because, fact number five, the Quran is not arranged chronologically. Apart from the first chapter, which is a short prayer, the rest of the Quran is basically arranged from the longest chapters to the shortest chapters. But the longer chapters were generally much later than the shorter chapters, so the Quran is thoroughly disorganized, making it very difficult to read. You might not care about the order, but it's actually extremely important because, fact number six, some parts of the Quran abrogate or cancel other parts of the Quran. Later revelations typically abrogate earlier revelations, but since the Quran isn't arranged chronologically, we don't know which verses are canceled and which verses still apply without massive collections of commentaries to help sift through this mess. You'll recall that the Quran's main argument for its divine origin is that it's so incredibly well written. It must be from God. Yeah, it's so wonderfully written that no one can understand what they're supposed to do without consulting a team of scholars. This is my modern take on the Quran. What did Muhammad's contemporaries think of it? Fact number seven, Muhammad's contemporaries were convinced that the Quran was plagiarized from earlier sources. How do we know what they thought about the Quran? We know because the Quran repeatedly tells us that Muhammad's contemporaries accused him of stealing his stories from others. How did Muhammad respond to charges of plagiarism? He declared that, fact number eight, the Quran is a continuation of previous scriptures. The reason so much of the Quran sounded so familiar to the people of Arabia wasn't that Muhammad was plagiarizing earlier sources. Those earlier sources were also the word of Allah. That's why they sounded the same. Of course, Muslims today know that those earlier sources thoroughly contradict the Quran, so they're forced to claim that the earlier sources were corrupted. This is extremely odd because, fact number nine, the Quran was only compiled into a book because much of it was lost. According to Muslim sources, entire chapters of the Quran were forgotten. Large passages came up missing. Verses vanished. This was in spite of the fact that Allah promised, he promised in chapter 15, verse 9, to protect the Quran from corruption. He couldn't do it, which calls into question the rest of what he said. Why is this relevant? Because, fact number 10, the Quran is the highest authority on matters of Sharia. Raping captives, beating women into submission, chopping off hands for stealing, grown men marrying little girls. These things come from this book, which most certainly is not the word of God. 
Learn these facts, my friends, and share them with others. If you like the sources for anything I've said in this video, click on the link in the description box. It's all there, waiting for you to do your part in throwing a great big freedom-sized monkey wrench in the jihad machine. And since there's much more the world needs to know about Islam, click on this subscribe button so you'll know when I post my next video, which I assure you will be awesome.